Okay, we want to talk about solving simultaneous linear equations, and we're going to start with just solving simultaneous equations in two unknowns. <coughs> um, now, equation you see up here, I'm uh, going to solve later. Start down here. Okay, two simultaneous. So we've got two boards there. And this, this is behind this one. Okay, two simultaneous linear equations. Uh, 2x plus 3y equals 7, 4x minus y equals negative 4. Put any numbers in here that you want. Okay, well, geometrically, we're going to look at this geometrically first. Um, we can graph both of these lines. Okay, we can easily graph uh, this straight line. Uh, we just uh, let x equal 0 to find the y-intercept. We find we get 7 thirds. We let y equal 0 to get the x-intercept, and we get 7 halves. So here are the two intercepts of this line. So here's the line. Now, intercepts work best as long as the intercepts aren't too close to the origin. If the intercepts are very close to the origin, then small errors in plotting your points can lead to very big errors in the actual location of the line. And, of course, then you can find the y-intercept and the slope and graph it using the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, well, we do the same thing with this equation. We get intercepts at x equals negative 1 and x equals 4. Now, each of these lines, this line is the set of all points that satisfy this equation. If it's on the line, it satisfies the equation. Uh, if it satisfies the equation, it's on the line. Okay, same with this line. So we have the set of all points satisfying this equation here in white. And then in yellow, we have the set of all points satisfying the second equation. Now, these two lines intersect at a unique point. Okay? Any two straight lines with different slopes are going to intersect at exactly one point. Now, if the two lines happen to have the same slope, well, that's a situation we'll talk about a little bit later that you'll experience in your homework. Uh, but if the lines are parallel, then either they lie on top of each other and they intersect at every point, or they lie apart from each other and they never intersect, okay? If the lines aren't parallel, though, they have to cross and at exactly one point. So you have a unique point that satisfies both equations. Estimate the coordinates of this point to be negative 4, 3. And this is something you really want to do, uh, you know, on your first assignment at least, for simultaneous equations. You really want to reconcile the graphical picture, the geometric picture, with the rigorous solution. Now, if I plug negative 0.4 and 3 into these equations, I don't get exact equality. If x is negative 0.4, then 2x is negative 0.8. If x is 3, then 3y is 9. And negative 0.8 and 9 is 8.2, not 7. So, this is a hand-drawn graph, an eyeball estimate. Uh, we don't expect it to be that accurate. It's reasonably close. Uh, with a little more care, we probably could have made it closer. Okay, well, then we have this equation, and we can plug numbers in here. 0.4 times negative 0.4 times 4 is negative 1.6, and then we'd have negative 3, which would give us negative 4.6 instead of negative 4. That's pretty close. So this is a plausible graph, but it's not totally accurate. So now we go to do a little bit of algebra, uh, and it's fairly simple. Uh, so uh, I said we got, yeah, 8.2 and negative 4.6, um, and that matches what I just said over here. So here we've checked. So just running through the check, we plug in the negative 0.4 into the first equation. We get this. We plug... Uh, oh, the negative 0.4 and the 3. We plug <coughs> the negative 0.4 and 3 into the second equation, and we get this, exactly as I said it. Okay, well, let's just actually solve this. Um, if we have this equality and this equality, in other words, our two equations, then... we can 
multiply the second equation by 3. Okay, 4x minus y equals negative 4 gives us 12x minus 3y equals negative 12. And we did that so that the 3y here and the 3y here would match up. So that we can then add the two equations and the y terms go away, we end up with an equation in x. Now the logic of this is simple. If we multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, then this side becomes three times as great, and this side becomes three times as great. If they were originally equal, they're still equal. So if this equals this, then this has to equal this. Now, another set of equalities. If this equals this, and this equals this, then this plus this has to equal this plus this. Okay? So if the two terms underlined, or two, two expressions underlined in purple are equal, we get this purple expression. Two lines underlined in yellow are equal, we get this yellow expression. And you can verify that this works. Um, so we have 14x equals negative 5. The 0y, of course, contributes nothing. So we get x equals negative 5 thirteenths, approximately negative 0.37. Now that compares reasonably well with the negative 0.4. Okay. Uh, now, not using the negative 0.37, using the fraction, which is exact, this is merely an approximation. There's a middle approximation involved here as usual, so check my arithmetic. I could be off by a hundredth there. Hopefully no more than that, but you never know. If x is negative 5 fourteenths, then since 2x plus 3y equals 7, since this is the case, 2 times negative 5 fourteenths plus 3y equals 7, multiply both sides by 14, you get what you see here, 2 times negative 5, 14 divides out, and 14 times 3 is 42. Uh, well, we have 14 times 3x and 14 times 7. Uh, 14 times 7 is 98, and we add, well, this is going to give us a negative 10. We add 10 to both sides, we get 108. And the 14 uh, times 3 is 42, so we divide by the 42. We get y equals 108 over 42, very easy to do. 18 sevenths, which is about 2.6. And now if I plug these numbers into these equations, it's going to be much closer. Okay, Instead of a negative 0.4, I'll have a negative 0.37 here. It won't make too much difference. Instead of the 3, we get a 2.6. Okay, well... You can add those things up. Uh, that's, there's nothing to it. You're going to see that these things are pretty close. And if I plug the fractions themselves, the negative 5 fourteenths and the 18 sevenths in, well, you can work that out. Remember to multiply by common denominator and so forth. And you, you should get exact equality. So you can check this and make sure I've done it right. Okay, that's one method of solving a set of simultaneous equations. That's called elimination, as you'll see uh, very clearly when you do your homework. Um, let's take another set of equations. Okay, now it's easy to solve this set by elimination. Okay, we multiply, well, actually, uh, the second equation by 3. Again, just coincidentally. Uh, and we match up the y's. Or we could, if we wanted to go a little more work, multiply the first equation by negative 3 to give us a negative 12x here. And the second equation by 4 to give us a plus 12x. And, of course, we multiply everything else. And we do the, uh, we do the elimination. We add the two equations, proceed as we did before. The alternative is to solve by substitution, which means <coughs> that we're just going to solve one equation for one of the variables and plug that expression for that variable into another equation into the other equation. So we solve the first equation for x or y. Let's choose to solve it for x. Uh, so if we solve the first equation for x, well, we're going to get 12 minus, well, I, I actually did the steps here. So you see the steps. We subtract the 6y from both sides, and then we divide both sides by 4. Now I chose to leave it this way rather than 
using a distributive law and breaking it into two terms. It's a matter of taste whether you do it one way or another. Um, but it's just going to be fewer terms to deal with when I do the substitution. Uh, of course, I'm going to end up dealing with all the terms anyway, but that's okay. Okay, so now we've solved the first equation for x. So we can take this expression for x. If this equation is true, then x has to equal this. And if x has, is equal to this, then if this equation is also true for the same value of x, then it's going to be true if we replace the x by the 12 minus 6y over 4. Now, so we do that. And we see that 3x minus 2y becomes 3 times this expression minus 2y. And that's still equal to 6. So, aha, there's only one unknown here. We can solve the equation for x. So we go ahead and do that. Uh, we distribute, uh, well, first we multiply both sides of the equation by the one denominator we have, which is 4, uh, giving us this, and that's easy to check. And I've got to check, because my check, when I checked this thing, didn't check out. Um, so I've done something wrong here, either in my check or in my solution. So let's be careful and see if we can spot it. Okay, so uh, 3 times... Uh, Okay, well, we get this. Multiply both sides by 4. That checks out. Okay, then I think I can multiply 3 by 12, get 36. By negative 6, we get negative 18. Everything's still good here. So 18 and 8 is 26. We get negative 26y. And subtract 36 from both 24, we get negative 12. We get y equals 12 over 26, which is 6 thirteenths. And you know, it's pretty easy. Divide 12 by 2, you get 6. 26 by 2, you get 13. Now we're going to substitute into either equation. So we'll just arbitrarily choose to substitute into the first equation. Uh, now we solve for y. Okay. Um, so we're going to substitute 6 thirteenths for y. I'm looking for the equation. Um, 4x plus 6y equals 12. So, uh, 4x plus 6y equals 12, well there's y, and then we multiply both sides by 13. Now, 4 times 13 is 42, I'm pretty sure of that, and 13 times 12 is 156, and I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, and of course then, uh, we end up with the 6 times 6, because the 13 is divide out, I didn't write out the step, but there it is. <coughs> I get 36, so 42x is 120, so x is 120 over 42. Well, you know, I can divide both sides by 2 to get this, then I can divide both sides by 3 to get this. Or I could have divided both sides by 12, uh, by, by, by uh, 6. Um, 6 goes into 120 20 times, 6 goes into 42 7 times. I don't see an error. Okay. Uh, now, a quick graph, where I just graphed by the intercepts again, gives me a point here, and I notice that this point is pretty close to 2, and that the, the x-coordinate is going to be just a little more than 2, and the y-coordinate is going to be pretty close to 0. Okay, it's, I mean, it's going to be a small positive number, well, that's consistent with 6 thirteenths. Is that about one-half? Looks like it's a little less than one-half in this graph, but it's a hand-drawn graph, so I can accept that. Uh, but we've got 27 here, which is a lot closer to 3 than it is to 2. So either I've got my intercepts wrong, but uh, don't see that that's the case. No, don't see a problem. Now, this line went a little bit low going through the 3. That would pull this point up a little bit and move it to the right. But 27 is almost 3. And I'm not comfortable with that. Then when I do the check, now when I did it before, it didn't work. I looked at it again. It still didn't work. I'm substituting 27 for x. Uh, okay. Okay, substituting in the second equation, 
Um, thought I saw something there, but I didn't. And I substitute the value for y here and 6 over here. Then I did the arithmetic, um, and I could have done that wrong. Uh, 6 times 13 is 78, so that should be 780. And 7 times 12 is 84. Yeah. Okay. So you get this, this. And then I got 7 times 13 times 6. Now all I've done here is I've done a shortcut. Okay. I've multiplied both sides by the product 7 times 13. Now if I multiply this by 7 times 13, the 7 divides up, but I get 13 times 3 times 20. In another way, 13 times 3 is 39. Double 39, you get 78. And the 0 gives us 780. I still think I'm right. Um, and 7 times 13 multiplied by this, the 13's divide out, I get 7 times 2, which is 14. 14 times 6 is 84. Uh, and I just did that a different way than I got the 84 previously. Uh, and then uh, if I made a bad mistake, it's probably here, and maybe I did. Um, 7 times 13 is 91. And 91 times 6 546, and I got 526. 7 times 13 is 91. Okay. And 13 times 6 is 78. 78 times 7 uh, would be 490 and 56, which is still 546, not 526. I think what I did there was I multiplied 42 by 6 and somehow got a 2 there instead of a 4. It's not particularly helpful though. Because 780 minus 84 is still 590, actually 696, that's even worse. Pretty bad for my mental arithmetic too. Okay, so it doesn't reconcile. I don't see a problem, so there's something wrong. See if you can find it, if you want to entertain yourself and catch me in a series of errors.